Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mick. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on Collection View Custom Layouts. In this episode, we're going to implement the basic Pinterest layout. You'll see how we can leverage a custom delegate protocol to seed the layout with cell height information at runtime to create dynamically sized cells. You'll also learn how to implement multiple columns and how to correctly calculate the content height for this type of layout. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. The layout will have two columns, each one containing cells of varying heights. The cells are still laid out in a traditional left to right manner, but since this layout doesn't adopt the concept of rows, all the cells are squished up together, which is exactly the effect that we're trying to achieve. There are a number of things that we need to do in order to implement this basic layout. First, we need a way to set the number of columns on the layout so that these can be taken into account when creating the layout attributes. Then, we actually need to generate those layout attributes and as part of that, we're going to reach out to our custom delegate, which in this case will be our controller, and ask it to provide the height for each of the cells. Now this is important because later in the series, that height will actually represent the height of the photo the cell ends up displaying. As the layout attributes are being created, they'll also be cached. And then when the collection view requests them by way of layout attributes for elements in rect, we can query the cache rather than having to generate them fresh each time. And this is important because you want to be as efficient as possible. Finally, as we're going through creating the, the layout attributes, we'll also be continuously updating the content height. So once all cells are catered for, the content height will actually represent the tallest column in the layout. And then the collecting view can configure its scrolling accordingly. And all of this will take place in prepare for layout. Now, you might be wondering why, since UI collection view flow layout has built in support for cells of different sizes, we're choosing to use UI collection view layout. And the answer to that is twofold. First, the flow layout adopts the concept of rows and therefore bases the height of each row on the tallest cell in that row and lays out the other shorter cells by vertically centering them. In order to achieve the Pinterest layout, we want all our cells in each column to be bunched up and laid out independently of cells in the other columns. And secondly, it's simply more efficient to do it this way. We could subclass UI Collection View Flow Layout let it perform the initial calculations and then update them accordingly to achieve the desired effect. But this would result in performing two sets of calculations per cell per update layout. So just before we get into making any changes to the start project, if you just want to build and run, you'll see that we've got this basic collection view set up, backed by an instance of UI collection view controller, and this is just using the stock collection view flow layout. So with that, if you want to stop the app from running, jump back to its code. The first thing that we need to do is create our new layout class. So right click on the layouts group, choose new file, iOS source and Swift file, click next. And we'll name this Pinterest layout, click create. Once that file's open, the first thing we need to do is change our import to UI kit, since that's where UI collection view lives. And then we can add our class declaration. And we'll call it the same as a file, Pinterest layout, and we'll make it a subclass of UI collection view layout. And with that done, we now need to tell our collection view to use this as its layout class rather than the stock flow layout. So jump over to the storyboard, select the collection view in the document outline, and then in the attributes inspector, change the layout from flow to custom, and then select the Pinterest layout that we just created. And then jump to the photo stream view controller and we just need to delete two lines from view did load and these are the ones that tell the flow layout what size the items are and as we're using a custom layout these are no longer relevant so we'll just delete those and then if we build and run you'll see nothing's being displayed which is a good sign at this point <laughs> because it means that the collection view is now using our custom layout class so jump back to Xcode, stop the app. Because for this layout, we need items of 
different sizes. We're going to use a delegate in the same way that collection views already use delegate to ask our delegate for the size of item at a given index path. So the first thing we need to do is jump to our layout subclass and declare our new delegate protocol. And we'll call that Pinterest layout delegate. And this will have just a single method collection view, which is an instance of UI collection view. And we'll use height for item at index path. And the index path is an instance of NS index path. And this will return a CG float, which is the height of the item at that given index path. Now that we've got our delegate protocol set up, we need to add a few properties to the top of our layout. The first one being the delegate. The next one that we're going to add is number of columns. And this just allows us to set the number of columns for this layout externally and have it being taken into account as we calculate the frames of the various cells. And we'll set the default value to one. Next, we want to create a few private properties. The first one is going to act as our cache and it's going to be an array of UI, collection view, layout attributes. And basically, the layout attributes are what we're going to calculate and pass back to the collection view and then the collection view takes those and works out the layout of the frames of all the items. We want to cache these because we only want to create them once and then whenever the collection view asks for them, we can return them from the cache rather than having to recreate them every time. The next one that we want to create is the content height and this will be a CG float and we'll give it a default value of zero. One of the methods that we have to override when we create a custom collection view layout is collection view content size. And we need to, as part of that, you need to return the height of the content of the collection view. And we need to work this out based on all the frames once have been calculated because we're going to have multiple columns. And the way that the items can be sized different per row means that some columns will be taller than others. And we need to calculate which is the tallest column. And that's what we're going to hold in content height. And then finally, we're going to have a convenience variable called width. And this is just going to return the width of the collection view, but it saves us retyping this same line of code over and over again because it's going to be used in several places. With those declared, the first method we need to override is collection view content size, which we just discussed. And we're simply going to return an instance of CG size where the width is our width property and the height is our content height property. Just some more space. The next method that we're going to override is prepare for layout. And this is called whenever a layout operation is going to take place on the collection view. Now, because we're going to use a cache, and this can be called several times. It's not just called when the collection view is first displayed. We need to first test if our cache is empty because we only want to perform the calculations if it is. And with that, the first variable that we need to declare is the column width. And the way we work out our column width is dead simple. It's the width of the collection view divided by the number of columns. And once we have our column width, we then need to create a couple of arrays that are going to hold the X and Y offsets of each frame. So as we loop through all the items in a collection view, we've got a reference of the previous ones, X and Y, so we can just add to those as we create the frames. So the first one we'll call X offset and we'll make an array of CG float. And because these are static, because our collection view layout is vertical rather than horizontal, we can immediately populate them. So we're just going to use a for loop. And we can just append to our x offset the value of times in the column, current column, by the column width. And that'll give us the x offset of each column. For the y offsets, these aren't static. These are going to be added to as we, as we loop through all the items in the collection view 
calculating their frames. So for now, we're just going to declare the array. Again, it's going to be array of CG floats, but this time we're going to use a different initializer. We're going to use count and repeated value, and the count is the number of columns, and the repeated value at the moment is zero. And with that done, the last variable we need to declare is a current column, which we can then in increment as we move through the columns. Set that to zero. And then we can loop through all the items in the collection view. And the way we do this is we ask the collection view for the number of items. And we've only got one section in this layout, so we'll use section zero. So now we're looping through all the items in the section. The first thing we need to do is create an index path for that item. And we'll use NS index path and the initializer for item, passing in the current item and the section zero. Now we have our index path, we can ask the delegate for the height. So we'll do delegate dot collection view, pass in the collection view and the height for the index path, path in the index path we just created. And then we've now got everything we need to create the frame of the item. So we can create a variable to hold that and it's CG rex and the X is the X offset for the current column. And again, the same for the Y offset. The width is column width and the height is the height we just got back from the delegate. I just noticed that should be Y offset. Y offsets. And now we've got our frame, we can create our attributes. And to do that, we use UI collection view layout attributes with the initializer for cell with item index path. And we'll pass in the index path that we've created earlier. We can now set our frame on the attributes and then add those attributes to our cache. We can then update our content height property. And the way we do this, because as I mentioned earlier, our columns can be, our items are different size. Um, we, are, we want to calculate the height of the tallest column. So we're going to use max and we're going to compare the content height against the maximum Y on the frame that we just created. And that'll always give us the tallest column. We can then update the Y offsets for the current column by simply adding the height of the frame to it. And then we just need to work out whether or not we're ready to loop round back to the first column or whether these other columns to work with. And the way we do that is if the number of columns minus one, we return zero. Otherwise, we just increment column. And the final method that we need to override for our custom layout is layer attributes for elements in rect. And basically what this method's doing is the collection view is going to pass you the visible rect on screen and you need to determine which of your layer attributes appear in that rect and return just those. And because we've cached it and we have access to the frame, we can just check if the frame intersects with the rect and return the relevant attributes. So the first thing we need to do is create a layer attributes array which is holds instances of UI collection view layer attributes. We can just return those. And then we'll just loop through our cache and check if the two recs intersect. Pass in our attributes frame and then the rec the collection view passes is. And if they do, we simply append the attributes to our layer attributes array and then return those. Now, there are a couple more steps that we need to do before we can build and run again to see this in all its glory. So if you just jump over to the PhotoStream view controller, and the first thing that we need to do in here is to add a new extension to implement our new delegate method. We'll just come to the bottom of the file to do that, and we'll use extension, PhotoStream view controller, and this is implements our Pinterest layout delegate. And then we can implement the method, which was height for item at index path. And for now, we're just going to return a static value. We then need to come up to view did load. And 
get a handle on the layout and just cast that as our Pinterest layout and then we can set the delegate as ourselves. And with that, if we build and run, you'll see that we're now laying out all our own cells and these are all 100 points wide because that's what the delegates returned. If we stop, jump back to Xcode and we set the number of columns to two and build and run again. We see now we've got two columns where the cells are all 100 points tall and the content size is correctly worked out to our tallest column. Finally, if you just jump back to Xcode one more time, if we jump down to our delegate method, we're just going to return a random height so you can see that the, the layout is actually working and we'll just use arc for random uniform for that. And we're going to return a number between one and five. And then we'll return that wrapped to the G CG flow. And we're just going to times it by a hundred, which will give us a good size for each of our items. And if you build and run one last time, you'll see we've now got randomly sized cells and our scroll height and content size still works out on the tallest column. And that's it for this video tutorial, but as always, we do like to leave off with a challenge. As it stands, the cells in the layout are all packed in quite tightly. But if you take a look at the Pinterest app, you'll see that the cells are actually inset from the bound of the collection view, and that each of the cells individually has its own padding around all four edges. So your challenge this time is to update the layout to take the collection views content inset property into account before moving on and adding your own cell padding. Make sure though that the space around each cell is equal so that the layout looks really good when you've finished. As always you can find all the details in the challenge document but do make sure to give it a go yourself before reading through the solution. That's it for this video tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed watching and we'll see you again next time.